Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to see you all at this uh, early hour. But of course, we have this early hour also because uh, Commissioner Kirekidis needs to go to the college uh, very soon. So we have one hour. Uh, I do uh, formally, since this is the first envy uh, item on the agenda, we do need a formal adoption of the agenda where there is one little change to the agenda because of uh, changes in the, in the schedule of the college. This means that point 11 will be taken at 2.30. That's the Global Methane Pledge. And it will be taken before we have the exchange of view with uh, Commissioner Sinkovicius, uh, because there are also some items uh, on the college agenda that uh, is uh, uh, affecting him. Let's put it this way. So he will come a bit later to the Envy Committee. So the exchange of views with Mr. Sinkovicius will start a quarter past three. So we will take the item on the exchange of view of uh, with the item on the Global Methane Pledge before that at 2.30. So that's a little exchange of the afternoon agenda that uh, will be done. After having said that, I, can, I hope we can adopt the agenda and that seems to be the case. And then, well, uh, very briefly, Chair's announcement's not going to do that because it's interpretation, it's over the electronic meeting. Uh, and uh, just one point that the Health Working Group workshop uh, on novel tobacco products will be taking place uh, this afternoon from between 12.30 and 2 o'clock. So just that you are aware that the Health Working Group is having their meeting this afternoon. Cool. Then we now immediately go to where you were coming for, and that is the exchange of views with uh, uh, Commissioner Kiriakides. Thank you very much for being here, as always. Uh, quite some items on the agenda, I have to say. So. Uh, I propose that you uh, just uh, give your opening remarks and then we have a round of coordinators. And if time allows, we do catch the eye. But that depends very much on the commissioner, but certainly also on the coordinators and how long they take there to do their questions. But first, uh, Stella, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much and thank you for uh, being so accommodating for us and for Commissioner Sinkevichius. It's college day. We're adopting... We're putting forward the package on global health today, so I have to be there uh, immediately after. And uh, uh, Commissioner Sintovicius is uh, have the presenting now at nine o'clock the package on circular economy. So I'm going to try and uh, highlight as many points as possible, and hopefully this may also give some answers and gain some time with with the questions. Um, I'm going to be uh, focusing on. Um, uh, mainly the pharmaceutical reform and the farm to fork strategy with you today. Now, with the pharmaceutical reform, I just wanted to tell you that we uh, intend to bring this forward in the, in the next um, few months as early as possible. What we're working towards is to have a very strong yet a very flexible legal framework um, that is going to be uh, both resilient at times of crisis, but also promoting uh, innovation. Uh, many of the issues that you have often raised, and I know citizens have raised to you, uh, are about uh, access and affordability. And um, what we're going, what we're trying to do with this legislation is to ensure that all patients have the medicines they need wherever they need, they were there wherever they live within the EU. The second point is to ensure that we uh, have innovation because we need to maintain the EU pharmaceutical industry as a world-class innovator. Now, this reform will also be covering um, medicines for rare diseases and children and also uh, antimicrobial resistance. Uh, we are also looking to enhance the security of supply to address issues of medicine shortages and of, of course part of it is making medicines greener. So many of us have discussed together the European Health Union. This is another pillar of the European Health Union and this um, is a proposal that comes together in a way with the European Health Data Space which is already uh, before you. So I'm I hope that uh, we can move quickly with this once we uh, put forward the proposal because um, for us it's, it's a potential 
game changer in the area of health and for citizens and patients. And from my side, um, I can just assure you that I will be at your disposal uh, to meet at any time to discuss any details you may want. Um, now, our future proposal for um, a council recommendation on AMR, which is also important, is part of our One Health approach that we're putting forward internationally. And um, our One Health and uh, Antimicrobial Resistance feature in the Global and Health and Preparedness package that the Commission is effect adopting today. So this is a very important package, but it's also intrinsic to our efforts in Farm to Fork, what we're trying to achieve. I have said many times that um, uh, we need to build a, f a sustainable food system and that we have seen through COVID, with climate change, and now the, the terrible war in Ukraine, how the transition to sustainability is even more important in our ability to tackle future crises. And we are all here because we need, in fact, responsibly to make sure that we deliver long-term food security. Um, our, an agri-food sector that is less reliant on external inputs and more resource efficient and is more environmentally uh, friendly will prove to be more uh, resilient. So what we're seeking is to make progress on a wide range of initiatives. The first is the sustainable use of pesticides. Second is food labeling. The third is the sustainable food systems framework. The fourth is food waste. The fifth is new genomic techniques. And last but not least, animal welfare. In June, we presented the new rules to reduce the use and risk of pesticides. We all know that this proposal has elicited different views from many different quarters, but my position remains as it was and is that standing still is not an option. I understand that sensitive areas and target setting are the most contentious issues, we have uh, already put forward um, a non-paper for sensitive areas, which would mean moving away from a total ban and also differentiating clearly between areas used by the public and agricultural areas. And we're trying to address in this way uh, some of the concerns raised, but also maintaining um, or minimizing the negative impact on biodiversity and citizens' health. And I have already said when I was in the Agri Committee on Monday that I would like them to come forward to discuss what we have already submitted and for us all to find agreement on the target setting uh, methodology, which was another issue. Uh, I believe that this is a, a fair approach. Uh, we are open to other ideas from this committee um, and um, uh, want to be able to share with you to reach a, a consensus so we can move ahead. Um, we are, the third point that has been raised as an, an issue is the administrative burden, and we're uh, looking to find a better balance uh, to address this. Um, on the challenging topic of food security, um, we need to, we're looking to see further solutions, and the request has come from several member states to have a complementary report to assess its impact. Um, this should not delay the negotiations uh, or scrutiny of our proposal. <clears throat> and we're no now looking forward to receiving Parliament's report and finding workable uh, compromises. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to say much more because I know that there is a, a great deal that you will be asking. I just want to two or three points, if I may. Um, that we need to um, uh, continue with the negotiations under the usual legislative procedure to avoid significant delays, and we do not want to jeopardize adoption during the current parliamentary term in moving forward. Um, and I'm confident that we will find a healthy compromise in everyone's interest. Um, Food labeling and impact assessment is, uh, uh, is being uh, prepared. Public consultations are on the way with member states and businesses because we're looking to find an EU proposal that will be a balanced uh, 
as possible. And um, I am going to uh, stop here uh, because I think that um, uh, there's a great deal that can come up in the questions. One point which I think is important, and I have been asked in this room today, and I want to say it from the beginning. Um, we have an animal welfare legislation program for the end of the year. For me, this is a, a big priority of my portfolio, and we need to have high standards. So we will be presenting our legislative proposal on this, which will be based on scientific opinion and uh, opinions from, the, from EFSA, along with assessments of the impact on this um, after the summer. So I, I leave it at that, and I'm here to pick up as many questions as we are able in the hour. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, as you said, indeed, I'm, I'm quite sure there will be questions on many of the topics that you raise. So uh, without further ado, we immediately go to the round of coordinators. And I really ask the coordinators to, to stick to their time, uh, because uh, then we can allow also some catch the eye. And there, are, there is already quite some interest in that. So please, uh, coordinators, leave it to two minute, minutes. And first for EPP, we take the question of Peter Liesen. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Stella, for all your engagement and uh, ability to, to speak this morning. Um, I want to raise only two points in the limited time. First, in fact, the sustainable use of plant protection products. Um, you know that EPP has really a problem here. We think it's the wrong time for such a proposal because we are in the middle of a food crisis. And I, I agree that other measures are necessary, uh, for example, to reduce food waste. And as a doctor, I also re recommend to eat less meat. But this proposal will reduce the food production in Europe. And I think that's definitely not something we need today. And uh, the proposal is also not good enough. In my constituency, even the nature conservation experts are against the complete ban in sensitive areas. I have a Natura 2000 area, one of the biggest in Germany, and here the birds are coexisting with agriculture, and even the people that protect the birds are afraid of this proposal. I can show you the letters. So really, uh, we have a problem, and we need... You know, my proposal would be to withdraw it and bring something better uh, when things have calmed down, but definitely this proposal will not be supported by the EPP. Second point, medical devices. Um, thank you for all the efforts that you are doing here. I have to put it bluntly. The life of children in Europe is in danger because we have a problem with medical devices. We had good intention when we agreed on this legislation, but then came Brexit, came COVID, and we also have to realize that some of the provisions are really difficult. Um, experts on pediatric cardiology, pediatric surgery are telling us children will die because of this regulation, so we need to change this. What I heard uh, yesterday is not reassuring, so no proposal this year, and if a proposal next year, very limited, I would again encourage you to go fast and to be courageous. We need to change the medical device regulation to save life, especially of children. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Welcome to all. Welcome to you, uh, Commissioner. And thank you, Bas, for starting the meeting. Uh, so we move to uh, Timo Volken for SND. Thank you very much, Pascal, and thank you, uh, Bas, for, for opening our today's meeting. And of course, dear Commissioner Destella, thanks for being here with us for uh, the exchange. We do that on a frequent basis, and this really shows your commitment to, to the fields, and uh, thank you for this. Um, I'll also start with a point uh, on the sustainable use of pesticides. Um, I would um, encourage you to keep on working on the file. It's really needed. It's about human health. It's about um, drinking water security, for example. It's about minimizing the costs to clean uh, water we need for human consumption. So uh, this is a really crucial uh, file. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we do hear the rumors from the council that they want uh, to 
basically kill it and they want to request additional information so i think the council will ask you uh, to to prepare some homework um i do not agree with the merits of the council to be uh, totally honest but i would encourage you to share the information as soon as possible with us the uh, you ch are going to share with the council so that we can really prepare and start working in a timely manner and um, once again, I would encourage you to not backtrack on uh, the ambition uh, laid down in the Green Deal and the Farm to Fork strategy. I know it's it's a different it's a difficult file, and yes, there are some um, not so good formulations in it. But I'm sure that we will make sure in the legislative process uh, that it is a suitable solution for uh, the problems uh, I already mentioned. Secondly, on the topic of food labeling, which is uh, also long awaited, um, as far as I understand, the proposal passed the regulatory scrutiny board assessment some weeks, uh, some six weeks ago, but somehow it disappeared somewhere. Could you uh, maybe explain what the status of this file is? And lastly, uh, rumors also have it that the regulatory scrutiny board also approved the impact assessment on the revision of the pharmaceutical legislation. Here as well, would you be able to tell us when you expect the proposal to lend? Will it still be the first quarter of the next year? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We move to <coughs> renew Veronique trier Noir. Thank you, Pascal and Bas, dear Commissioner Kyriakides. On many occasions, you have expressed converging views with the Parliament in regards to the prevention of diseases related to poor nutrition, cancers, obesity, and last week, diabetes. To achieve our public goals in terms of saving lives and sparing healthcare costs, we need an ambition policy on nutritional food labeling. The consumers are awaiting for your legislative proposal of a European front of pack nutrition labeling policy. It is our duty to provide all European customers a mandatory, harmonized, science-based, reproducible, evolving, and understandable for all information on the food we buy. The, explanation, the expectations of the consumers should not be, should be, should be the only motivation to provide this common profile independently from groups of influence or national pressures. Together, we should be able to stop the counterproductive battles on the defenders of each system and concentrate our efforts on human public health. Therefore, my question is simple. I was very happy to hear that you want to avoid the delays for publishing your proposal. Does the Commission intend to introduce the revision of the food information to consumers regulation before the end of the mandate? And if yes, when can we expect your proposal we have an emergency here in terms of agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Two minutes sharp. Uh, then we move to the Greens. Sarah Wiener. Yes, thank you, Chair. And vielen Dank, Frau Kommissarin, dass Sie sich heute. And thank you very much, Commissioner, for taking the time to come along for this exchange of views of the farm to fork strategy. This strategy is particularly important because there is a need to shift our food production towards a more sustainable model. I just want to say something about the reform of the seed legislation and the labeling. Both proposals have been postponed to this year. And they're not even in the work program for 2023. Can you tell us when these proposals are going to be dealt with? There are a number of proposals of the Green Deal which seem to have got stuck in a logjam. So I just want to say how important the pesticide regulation is. Our citizens expect us to stand up for reduction in pesticides for everybody. And rather than saving farmers, just to save farmers and bees, we need more uh, strategic uh, proposals which are more in line with nature 
This is not targeted at farmers. They want to make them more independent of uh, chemicals. The current fertilizer crisis shows that we should be focusing more on crop rotation only in this way can we ensure the future of holdings and Mr. Lisa they're only going to start uh, to come into force in a couple of years so to say that it's to do with uh, COVID or the war is not true these are issues that we need to, there are issues that we need to discuss as co- legislators, but it is our duty to find uh, compromises and to push this important dossier for forward. So can I appeal to the EPP to be constructive in these discussions? It's not responsible to block it, as you have been doing so far. I know that you have uh, a tough time in council, Commissioner, and I hope that you will be able to stand your ground. Our health, the environment, and agriculture will thank you in the future. We have difficulties with poisons, with pesticides in nature. We've got to solve uh, this issue. Thank you. Thank you very much. We move to ID, Sylvia Lima. Vielen Dank. Tja, wenn in Zukunft. Thank you. If in future farmers are to be transferred into CO2 um, gardeners rather than producing local and good food, then food is going to be more and more expensive. We're now talking about CO2 binding by the farmers and forestry. You're loading more and more bureaucracy on the farmers and you're then talking about a 50% reduction of uh, pesticides in by 2030, so 50% reduction and then a ban in certain sensitive areas. You want to impose quotas uh, which uh, would oblige farmers to set aside areas and you're now saying that there has to be another reduction of 20% in uh, manure and we're going to run out of food. There's a production that by 2040, instead of 15 million farms, we'll only have, have 3.6 million. And that's why we're focusing on re-educating consumers. Sugar and salt and uh, chocolate are bad for you and so on. Anything that doesn't uh, fit in your model is banned. The consumption pattern has to be changed so that the climate is can be saved, we are being told. Although the council made it clear that the impact assessment is not up to scratch. So you should withdraw your pesticide directive and start all over again. Thank you. Thank you. We move to ECR, Mr. Procaccini. Grazie, Presidente. Thank you. Chair, good morning, Commissioner. Looking at the upcoming proposals within the Farm to Fork package, I think one could say that it is a rather ambitious legislative package, perhaps over ambitious. And I think the impact of that may be that it ends up being counterproductive. Reviewing food contact materials, the legislative framework for sustainable foods, the regulation on uh, nutritional uh, supplements, labelling on the packaging, a whole set of different standards and regulations where the aim is to bring in a new raft of legislation for the EU. So on the one hand what you're doing is 
complicating matters, making everything more complex, but also more uniform. And uh, at the same time, you're also providing a disincentive for territorial diversity, for agricultural production. And in terms of the supply chains and uh, shortening the value chain in terms of the supply of foods in order to provide uh, food security, which is, uh, of course, uh, a crucial aspect that we need to defend in the EU, I fear that this is moving in the wrong direction. Since we have limited time, I'll comment on the uh, package labelling, which is the point under discussion. I do understand the starting point here. I just fear that the end point could end, actually end up harming consumer health. You have to weigh up uh, the nutritional balance. Quantity, preparation, methods, subjective factors relating to the individual consumer, etc. And this is something which others have said too. I think at this point it would be helpful to know what stage you've reached on this proposal and what proposals the Commission has on the nutritional labelling methodology. Děkuji, pane předsedo. Vážená paní komisařko, děkuji, že jste přišla. Thank you very much, Commissioner, for coming along. You made a lot of proposals. But it's been a year since they were first tabled. And I'd like to know how you see the pharmaceutical strategy which you promised, which is absolutely essential for patients who suffer from rare diseases. It's essential in order to have sufficient medicine for these patients throughout Europe. Because patients throughout Europe don't even get the necessary medicines if they happen to be living in the wrong country. You promised a pharmaceutical strategy a medicine strategy, you promised that a year ago and nothing's happening. So can I ask you frankly, are you really planning a strategy or will there be no time during your term in office to even have a first reading in Parliament? We're certainly not going to finish it. But that would be a major loss for the health union. I know you have a lot of things you need to deal with, a lot of points which have to do with health, but this is really something that affects an awful lot of patients throughout Europe, and it would be a good idea to be fair with them and tell them whether or not there's going to be enough medicine for them, and not to keep saying maybe. How do you see things? How do you see the timetable? And then the second point is labeling of foodstuffs. I'm a bit afraid that uh, foodstuffs with uh, a lot of different ingredients will be sold, sold better than, say, standard milk. And I'm afraid we're going to be lying to the consumers because a lot of substitute ingredients will be a lot more expensive than a natural raw material, which is healthy, but not in line with the result that you want. And that these products will be presented as being bad for you. I think you have to be very careful, otherwise you're endangering the health of our citizens. They need to eat healthily. The catch the eye to check how many members would like to have the floor. I have already on my list Pernier Weiss, uh, Borten, Emma Wissner, Timetz, and Azerkamp. That's it. Okay, so we have five speakers. I suggest we take these five speakers yes. now, and then you have yes, a... Yes, then, then uh, I can move. Exactly. So, we move to EPP and Pernier Weiss. 
Thank you so much, and thank you, uh, Commissioner Kirikidis, for being with us uh, again today in this very uh, important topic and challenging times uh, still. The current prevalence uh, threshold of uh, rare diseases uh, is conditions that affect no more than five in 10,000 people. Can the Commission confirm that no change will be made in this threshold? And if the Commission does intend to make changes, for, instance, for example, uh, to make the threshold communicative uh, so that the same molecule cannot be used for more than one rare disease under the orphan regulation, have you considered what effect that will have on investments in research to, into medicines for rare diseases? Uh, and how also would you find these uh, changes uh, to fit with the objectives uh, of the beating uh, cancer plan uh, to address uh, rare diseases? Also, I would like to ask, considering the links between general pharma legislation and the orphan regulation and the concerns about the number of legislative proposals in this mandate, is the Commission considering merging its proposal into just one? Thank you so much. Thank you. We move to uh, SND uh, Viana Bordan. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, before I ask my question, I would just like to say that I fully support what Veronique uh, uh, said about front of pack uh, uh, nutritional labeling. Uh, and now, uh, uh, I would like to say that the, the report of uh, World Health Organization European Re Regional Office uh, published uh, in May uh, uh, alarming overweight and obesity uh, rates across Europe. Uh, 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 rather than placing the burden of responsibility on um, uh, uh, the shoulders of individual consumers, uh, uh, the World Health Organization has called for a strong uh, a government leadership uh, that prioritizes public health and for a range of interventions uh, uh, to tackle the structural, including commercial, determinants of obesity. So uh, we know that the uh, Commission is currently, uh, currently developing uh, the frame of law for a sustainable EU food system, which should be uh, uh, we, we expected for September uh, 2023. So I would like to, uh, to ask two questions. Uh, will this framework uh, law recognize the role of food environment, uh, uh, environments including pricing, marketing, uh, and advertising promotions? Uh, in shaping uh, consumers' food choice. And the other question is, how can uh, the sustainable food system framework uh, law uh, promote food environments uh, that support consumers uh, in adopting sustainable healthy diets? Thank you. Thank you. We move to Renew Emma Wisner. Thank you very much, Commissioner, for coming along today. Thank you for being here to present, uh, make that presentation. I really look forward to hearing the welfare legislation, but the most important objective is to halve the use of antibiotics in Europe. I have a couple of questions. First of all, when will you be presenting? What are you going to present, rather, in the context of the sustainable food production to reduce the use of antibiotics in farming. And my second question is on the production of medicines. We have very strict legislation about uh, on uh, the production of medicines and not least antibiotics, but we import a lot of active ingredients which are used then for antibiotics and medicines. And a lot comes from China and India, and we don't really know everything about their production methods. We know there's a lot of pollution and antibiotic resistance in these countries. In the medicine strategy, you, you say that, that this would be improved and that we would uh, have more strict rules on the import of active ingredients. Are you going to making, be making proposals along these lines? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we move to the Greens, TMS. 
Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Uh, thank you, the Commissioner, for being with us. So, indeed, the pharma package is uh, strongly awaited by this House and also by a lot of patients because, indeed, there are unmet needs, a lack of R&D uh, in certain domains, but also growing issues about uh, access and affordability to medicines in the EU, and I'm happy you mentioned them in your presentation. So the usual strategy of the Commission is to incentivize R&D with longer IP rights. So is the Commission now exploring other avenues to boost R&D or at least to attach conditionality to this intellectual property incentive, such as sharing the results of research to allow other companies to build on what was discovered, or affordability really on the, on the drug prices once on the market. My second question is, are you also planning to ask companies for more transparency on this R&D codes, which would give member states a better understanding and bargaining power when purchasing uh, the drugs. Thank you very much. Thank you. And as I come for the left. Yeah, thank you, Voorzitter. Welcome. Thank you, Chairman. Welcome, Commissioner. A year ago, we voted with a large majority to support the aims of the for farm to fork strategy and we were supporting your plans when it came to uh, having the use of pesticides and to um, look at what we're doing with the cows by 2027. We wanted to reduce emissions, we wanted to improve animal welfare and review the rules on uh, slaughter and transport. So we'd like to encourage you to follow up all of those actions as quickly as possible because it's in the interest of the people, animals and the environment. And once again, we're asking for attention for the um, horses in Uruguay, for example, and the way they're being used for their blood. The animals are having their blood taken out of them. It's all to produce the hormones for our cattle industry. This parliament has already called for a ban several times and I'd like to know when the Commission is actually going to take action. When is PMS going to be banned in Europe and when will they be banning that use of blood? Thank you. Thank you and the last uh, question to you Commissioner is uh, from Nicolas González Cazares from SND. Gracias, President. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner, for being with us today. Almost 20 years on, we're revising the general legislation which is aimed at ensuring that we have safe, effective and efficient medicines and harmonization of the internal market. I know it's no easy task. We've been engaged in these discussions for some months now. It's not entirely clear when the legislation will be presented. Uh, but I have the following questions. Two-year extension for data protection for the placing on the market of a given medicinal product. Two years from authorization in a given member state. The negotiations on reimbursement price will be a national prerogative. How can we ensure that national health authorities ensure that the developers of pharmaceutical products will actually place a product on the market within that two-year period. Orphan medicines. Does the Commission intend to engage in joint purchasing, joint procurement for uh, orphan uh, medicines? Those joint uh, purchases could be an interesting avenue to explore. Thank you. Translation is over. Fine. So you have uh, many questions and, uh, of course, we expect concrete answers from your side. Go ahead. I have many questions and I will do my best to give uh, as possible, much as possible concrete answers, but also take in as much as uh, has been done. Now, a great deal has been said. Some topics are similar, but I'll try and, <clears throat> and take them as they were addressed. First of all, uh, uh, Dr. Lisa, I heard you very carefully. We have often had these discussions I believe we share a common view on the importance of uh, having health of citizens as a priority. 
um, we have consistently asked for proposals to come forward on our proposal, acknowledging the issues of content. <clears throat> and I have repeated, and I will repeat it again, that we did not put a proposal forward that was set in stone <clears throat> and the take it or leave it proposal. And I would also say that we need to also remember that this is not for tomorrow because we're talking as if this is going to suddenly change the world tomorrow. Uh, the th targets are coming in for 2030 by the time this is uh, discussed and passed. Um, and I think citizens need to be made aware of that. If you want my opinion, I think that we need to tell citizens that this is being discussed. It's to protect health of farmers as well, but it is not something that is going to start being an impact on them tomorrow because this is creating a great deal of anxiety. With food production, Dr. Lisa, we have had an impact assessment. With food security, uh, a study is coming uh, very, very shortly. And for sensitive areas, I'm sure you have seen that we put forward a non-paper in which it gives uh, proposals and solutions, including on, the, uh, on issues to do with total bans and nature areas. So please look, look at, at it in the same positive way we are looking at it and come back with specific proposals that we can discuss. On medical devices, I personally do not know what you heard last week unless you are referring to my points in Parliament. I presume it was that. I was very clear when I was in plenary last week. Uh, we will be bringing forward the legislative change to address the short-term issues and the medium and long-term issues and th there will be um, uh, an opportunity for you to see this, of course, this proposal on the legislative change. And it's going to be also discussed, of course, with the Parliament and presented to EPSCO uh, in the coming weeks. Um, MEP Walken, uh, we're always ready to work with you uh, uh, for all that you um, need. Uh, I want to thank you for your support and I want to inform you that um, the um, SUR uh, proposal is to be discussed in the next Agri-Fish Council on 13th of December. Um, you also asked on, on food labelling. There were a, a number of issues um, on food labelling questions and Veronique Triel-Lenoir and uh, others. I'll just say that at this stage where we are is that technical work is ongoing and political decisions need to be made on the future approaches. Um, on the front of pack labeling, uh, you, uh, you had a question on that. I fully agree on the importance of food labeling. And I think we, remain, we need to remember what, that this was a conclusion that also came out as a demand from citizens in the Conference of the Future of Europe. And if we held the Conference of the Future of Europe believing it means something, then we should also take into account what citizens want and citizens want clear uh, information for food labeling they also want less pesticides in their in their food if i would remember that as well and uh, we are remain committed to this proposal uh, and um, uh, we will be moving forward with it i cannot give you a date yet um, in terms of uh, the uh, farmer proposal. There were very many questions on that. Uh, because MEP Viners, um, and it's linked to what um, was said before, uh, that uh, not all proposals uh, are included in the work program of 2023. I wanted to come back to this. Uh, uh, this does not mean that they will not happen. Okay, let's be very clear on that. And uh, for the seeds, we're working for a proposal in quarter mm -hmm. two of 2023. Um, farmer proposal, can't give you a date, but I can tell you it will be the first quarter of 2023. Um, in terms of um, uh, uh, MEP Lima, with again on the proposal to do with the uh, uh, sustainable use of pesticides, uh, we have secured full support for farmers through CAP over a transition period of five years. Um, I believe that uh, 
what we need to all address is that we cannot go on business as usual if we want to have food sustainability. And again, I believe that we need to find ways, and I am always available, and that we have shown this with our non-paper on sensitive areas, to find the contentious areas, discuss them, and find ways forward. Um, MEP Procaccini said that we are, uh, I think, uh, over ambitious. I would say we are ambitious, and we should be ambitious uh, in what we put forward. Um, we're fully in line with the need to um, transform our food systems, but we remain pragmatic and realistic, uh, and we intend to be following up and putting forward and delivering on our, our farm to fork ambitions. Um, uh, labeling, I have answered many questions on pharmaceutical revision. Um, we're finalists, the, we're, well, I need to really update you in detail on this. Um, now we are finalizing the impact assessment of the different options for the revision of legislation, th of this legislation. You understand, we all understand, and you have said that, that this is really a very important legislation for all citizens and patients. So there's a lot of public consultation going on, and we're uh, working on that in order to be able to come forward with that in the first quarter of 2023. Um, we need to also address issues that have bottlenecks and uh, hamper innovation, and we need to adapt this framework. This is the big challenge, is to find the balance to achieve this while also making it flexible. And, and this is why we are uh, constantly working, and we need to have strong incentives, especially in the area uh, of unmet medical needs. And we need to try and reduce the administrative burden um, and adapt our regulatory progress processes to take account into uh, take into account technological progress. Um, there are different models now under consideration to ensure that uh, pharmaceutical companies will remain within the EU. We need a strong pharmaceutical industry within the EU. Um, but in all tested models that we have used, all innovative medicines will continue to receive a predictable period of, um, of regulatory protection. Um, now, the regulatory protection in the EU today amounts for up to 11 years from marketing authorization. This is among the most generous in the world. In other countries, it's about six to eight years. So we're looking at, at this as well in order to be able to move forward. Um, access and availability of medicines. Member states have this very high on the agenda, as does the European Parliament, and we are going to be working on this and especially focusing on the areas where at the moment there are no treatments available. And when it is about giving incentives to industry, it's also about ensuring that uh, we give incentives to industry but we also expect access to medicines to be improved. So we need to aim at inequalities of access disappearing from the EU. And this is our, our ambitious um, proposal. Um, on affordability and, and medicines and the high prices, you know, medicines are important if patients can actually ha have access to them. Patients can't have access to them. They don't serve their purpose. So you all know that pricing and reimbursement remains the responsibility of member states. But what we're trying to do now is, first of all, to facilitate the competition between... Um, so we have an earlier entry of biosimilar and generics. And also we're working with the member states to ensure a more cooperation and an exchange of best practices between them so we can come forward... Um, with a different way for them to look at their national reimbursing policies. Um, MEP Weiss, rare diseases. Um, well, technical work uh, is ongoing. I think you asked a specific question on um, if a change is intended if I, on, on the number. On the, no, it is not. I had a meeting also with the uh, relevant stakeholders last week, and I, I was very clear, but work is still ongoing 
on, on a lot of, of these issues, the way we define rare diseases, what this will mean, it, there's a lot of complexity and we need to try and get this as right as possible so as not to do something that in fact will impact negatively. While we're trying to help patients with rare diseases, we, make, we need to really calibrate this. So a lot of work is ongoing and we're trying to merge all proposals. Um, you also spoke about uh, whether in the EU we're falling behind in the competitiveness. Um, I've spoken a, a lot about the um, regulatory protection and the strong pharmaceutical, but basically what we want is with this legislation not to put companies that are based in the EU at a disadvantage. And this has to be important for all of us. For obesity um, uh, rates, uh, yes, uh, we know they're increasing across Europe. And I agree with it, we need concerted action at, at all levels, and this needs to be horizontal. So we have this looking at this through our Healthier Together initiative. We're looking at this through the issues to do with sustainable food systems. We're looking at this uh, Europe's Beating Cancer Plan, um, because all of it is relevant. And you have raised um, uh, really important points, but I can assure you that it is a priority for us. Um, AMR is part of what we're looking at for the pharmaceutical legislation and um, uh, we're looking uh, at also how we can um, work this in terms of uh, medicines, veterinary medicines <coughs> use um, and to look at to, uh, ways to have measures to ensure the prudent use of antimicrobials and not their abuse, which is very important. Um, I think that this I have done, affordability of medicines we went through. I'm not sure if I've answered everything. Um, I, I'm going to go to animal welfare because I'm aware of my time is being very limited. Now, this is a priority. I have said it and I will keep on saying it. I've said it from day one. Uh, we intend to come forward with this legislation at the end of 2023. Um, and we're looking at all the issues because what we need to do is ensure higher standards. And for that, uh, we also need to look, of course, at the economic impacts and we need to look at uh, um, the market o o opportunities. And farmers will be given the necessary time to adapt their practices. And uh, member states are expected to use their cap in order to be able to uh, support this transition. Um, on the um, issue to do with imported products, there, this is currently being um, uh, assessed in an impact assessment. No decision has been made uh, yet. Uh, but you are aware that we, this uh, legislation um, will look at all aspects uh, from transport to end of cage. And um, uh, I can just um, be very clear that we do intend to deliver on the farm to fork ambition on this. Um, and we look to your support. You asked about horses. Uh, I need to come back to that. I know about it, but you asked about a specific timeline and that I need to come back on. I do not have my information now, but I'm aware of the problem. Um, so uh, I think I've covered as much as I could, dear chair. Thank you for your patience. I have to go to college and I just want to repeat to every single member of your committee and I want to thank you for being always available that um, uh, just uh, reach out to us if any member wants to have a separate meeting for us to discuss specific issues to do with pharmaceutical, medical devices. Uh, there's your proposal. I am and my team is available and we will go through it again and again and again until we find ways forward because we have common objectives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's uh, just 10 a.m. So uh, thank you. You have to leave. Thank you for your answers uh, as precise uh, as, as possible. possible. <laughs> okay. Thank you.